Hi biologists! At the end of this section and following the biology syllabus, you should be able to describe the function of the two angiosperm vascular tissues, xylem and phloem. Draw and identify each tissue type. Distinguish between xylem tracheid cells and xylem vessel cells, phloem sieve tube cells and companion cells. What does this mean? What are we actually trying to learn? Well, you need to be able to describe the function of vascular or transport tissue in a flowering plant or angiosperms. You need to be able to draw and identify each tissue type. You need to be able to distinguish or tell the difference between xylem tracheid cells and xylem vessel cells, between phloem sieve tube cells and companion cells. Let's go. Let's try to understand the organization of the parts of the flowering plant by looking at vascular tissue, in other words, xylem and phloem. An organ is a number of different tissues working together to carry out one or more functions. Remember, an organ is a team of tissues. When we looked at the plant, we studied the shoot system and the root system, and we made the remark that systems are made of organs. So the root system was made up of the organs, stems, leaves, flowers, buds, and the root system was made up of the main root, organ, and the secondary roots. Now we have to understand that organs are made of tissues. Looking at the plant organs, we observed dermal tissue. The function of dermal tissue is protection. You might remember the idea of dermatitis, a dermatologist, coming from the idea of skin. So dermal tissue is like an outside skin. Sometimes it can be called epidermis. Its function, as we have just said, is to protect the plant from microorganisms or pathogens. The second type of tissue we observed was ground tissue. The function of ground tissue is for the storage of food. However, if ground tissue is green, it can carry out photosynthesis. The last tissue we observed was vascular tissue or transport tissue. There are two types of vascular tissue xylem tissue which carries water and minerals and phloem tissue which carries food. Now that we have observed all those tissues in the plant, we now have to remember and look at the idea that tissues are made of cells. Remember the definition. A tissue is a group of similar cells, similar cells carrying out a special function. When we look at tissues in a plant, we hope to see the cells from which they are made. Looking at plant tissues, there are two types. There are simple tissues, which are made up of structurally identical cells working together. An example of a simple tissue is dermal tissue, because it is only made of one type of cell. The second type of tissue that you can see in a plant is complex tissue. Complex tissue is made up of structurally different cells working together. For example, vascular tissue or xylem and phloem. Xylem and phloem are complex tissues. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at xylem and phloem and study the different cells that make up these tissues. Let's have a look at phloem tissue. Phloem tissue is a complex tissue. It is made of four cell types. 
including sieve tube elements and companion cells, which are the cell types that we are particularly interested in. Now, what is the function of phloem? Well, the function of phloem is an objective of this lesson. So we must realize that the job or the role or the function of phloem is to transport food, translocate it from where it is made to where it is used or stored. It is transported from a source to a sink. This means that phloem will transport the food up or down the plant. Unlike xylem, which transports water and minerals from the roots to the leaves and up the plant only. Let's have a look at phloem tissue and the cells that make it up. We can see this best by looking at a longitudinal section. The individual cells that make up phloem are called sieve tube elements. This time we will imagine the can of beans, but we will keep the top and the bottom, but imagine that they are full of holes rather like a colander or a sieve. That serves as a good model for understanding what a sieve tube element is like. The sieve tube element is a living cell, however, at maturity or when it is fully grown, it has no nucleus. It does have cytoplasm, which, which tends to be found around the margin of the cell. When these sieve tube elements are stacked, one on top of the other, you will then form a phloem pipe or a phloem vessel which is used to carry food. The pores in the sieve plates at either end of the sieve tube element allow the passage or the transport of the food. So in a nutshell, the function of phloem, as we've said already, is translocation or transport of food. You might recall O in food, O for outside, O in phloem. Because don't forget the phloem vessels are found on the outside of the vascular bundles in a dicot stem. And now we have O in translocation. The sieve plates allow the passage of materials. They are aligned to form a continuous tube up through which food can be transported. The sieve tube elements, as we've said, transport food. The cell wall of the sieve tube elements is made of cellulose, a complex carbohydrate, as per normal. Phloem does not have lignin. The second type of cell that makes up phloem tissue is the companion cells. The companion cells are living cells. They contain a nucleus. They control the activities of the sieve tube elements because the companion cells retain their contents. They still have mitochondria for supplying energy for the transport of the food, whereas the sieve tube element doesn't have any mitochondria, doesn't have any nucleus, doesn't have any ribosomes. The sieve tube elements are living but have no nucleus when mature. The companion cells contain dense cytoplasm and have vacuoles. So what is the description of phloem? Remember, an objective of this lesson is to be able to describe phloem tissue. Phloem tissue is complex, as we've said. It is made up of cells called sieve tube elements and companion cells. Phloem tissue is living tissue, made up of living cells with cytoplasm, though 
the sieve tube elements themselves have no nucleus. Phloem tissue contains sieve plates with pores, the end walls of the sieve tube elements that allow the passage of food. Phloem consists of elongated or long cells with thin cellulose cell walls. Looking at a cross section of phloem, we can see the cellulose cell walls. We can see in this particular case the lumen inside for the passage of food which would have cytoplasm around the margins. We can also see the sieve plate in the other phloem pipe. We see the second type of cells, the companion cells, containing a nucleus and dense cytoplasm. Now for some added detail, especially for those who are able for a bit more. Strictly speaking, how phloem is adapted to its function is not on the biology syllabus. But you should be able to take the material we've covered and adapt it to answer an interpretive or thinking cap question. So why is phloem adapted to its function? Well, it has a wide lumen which allows the flow of sugar. The fact that it has no nucleus, the fact that it doesn't have any mitochondria, etc., allows a, pass, a free passage for sugar to travel. It has little cytoplasm and as we have said no nucleus which allows sugar flow. The pores or the sieve plates are aligned forming a continuous tube for transportation. Even more added detail at this point, we should be able to take the material we've covered and adapt it to answering a question on what are the differences between xylem and phloem? Well, when we look at xylem, the function of xylem is to transport water and minerals. The function of phloem is to transport food. O in phloem, O in food, O for outside, O in translocate. Xylem tissue is non-living, consisting of dead cells, whereas phloem tissue is living tissue, consisting of sieve tube elements that are living cells and companion cells. Xylem has lignin cell walls. Lignin is an extra strong material providing support to the stem, whereas cellulose is the material found in phloem cell walls. See cellulose, all the L's in cellulose, all the L's in cell walls. Xylem has no companion cells, whereas phloem has companion cells that controls the activities of the sieve tube elements. At the end of the day, you must be able to draw large, clear, well-labeled diagrams of these structures and know the functions of each part. Practice in a jotter. Now that we've reached the end of our lesson, have we achieved our objective? Can you describe the function of the two angiosperm vascular tissues, xylem and phloem? Can you draw and identify each tissue type? Can you distinguish between xylem tracheid cells and xylem vessel cells, between phloem, sieve tube cells and companion cells?